Hey guys, uh, this is Matt here. I am going to start a new series today. I'm going to help you get started in R. Uh, this series is to help students in my econometrics class. Uh, most recently, this is the book I used. You might use a more dense textbook. It's a little thicker. I don't particularly care. I'm going to teach you some of the fundamentals of using R and getting it to give you results. Uh, Quick warning, I'm a self-taught coder. I've used coding skills in my research, but I've never actually taken any formalized classes or whatever. So if some of my naming conventions or something are wrong, I've been told I do it weird. Sorry, uh, it's gotten me this far. I've gotten my PhD and I've published a couple papers. So, uh, so yeah, if you're a computer science purist, go learn R in a different video. If you're just here to make a program work for an econometrics class, it might be able to help you. Or statistics. But anyway, uh, before we get started, you need to download R and R Studio. That's what I'm going to be working in. Uh, you got to have both. So yeah, with no further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we are in R. And if you've never seen this before, I'm just going to go over some of the really basest fundamentals today. Uh, first of all, down this big window here is a command window where you can tell R to do whatever you want to. I'm first going to open up a script though. I prefer doing my commands in the script instead of in the window because in the script I can store lots and lots of information and modify it later if I want to, whereas in the command window it's one thing at a time and it's harder to go back and forth. So the first thing I'm going to do, not because it's the most important, but just because it's the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to show you this little pound sign or hashtag or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is going to be our friend. This lets us make comments. So I am going to specify a library. Now, why do I need to do this? R is open source. Anyone can make up a function for it or a tool for it or whatever for it and put it up on the internet. And so what you'll end up doing in R is you're gonna end up downloading pieces of it as you need them. And so you need to tell R what pieces to look for. So in my class, a library we're gonna use a lot is the Woldridge library. Oh, I already have it installed. Uh, yeah, that was a neat thing. If you already have it installed, R tries to find it. If you didn't have it installed, then you would enter a command that looks kind of like this. Install packages, parentheses, quotation marks, folder. So this would actually get its own line, something like this. If I highlight that and run it, R is gonna to try to install the Woldridge package for me. Now it knows that I already have it, so it's not worried about it. Um, I'm gonna leave it out of my code though, just cause it's gonna slow things down. I'm gonna leave that command there in the comment for you, just in case you need it. Anyway, I've specified my library. I'm using the Woldridge package. Now I need to specify a data set. So something I can do is I can explore some general information about my packages in R. So I can look for my Woldridge package. And look at this, it's from a different textbook. It's got 111 data sets that I can use for teaching my classes. I'm going to choose one of them. Let's choose the wage panel data. And what's it have? It's got stuff on individual people over different years, what kind of experience they have and what kind of labor markets, all kinds of other information. It's like 40 something variables, hey, 44 variables. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this data for this video and probably the next couple of videos. So we're going to choose a data set. And by the way, I'm going to put these comments in here before every command. That's called annotating your, your code. 
and it makes it a lot easier to go back later and see what you've done in the past. It also is going to make it a lot easier to explain to others where you're at or to help your teacher understand what you tried to do. So I'm going to choose a data set and specifically I'm going to choose the wage pan data. So the way I'm going to do that is I'll just say data wage pan. Now let's see if we run that code. Does it work? So I can either hit run or when something is highlighted, I can hold control and hit enter. That didn't work. I wonder why. Let's see. You're going to see this thing a lot where it says that some object is not found. And what that means is it doesn't know what library you're doing. It doesn't know where to find it. Now, if you look, you'll see I never actually ran the code that says what my library is. So let me, let me just run both of these at the same time and see if that changes the result. Hey, look at that, it ran. It didn't give me some error code. Once I specified the library, now it knows where to find this wage pan. Now I only have to specify the library once. I won't actually have to go back and do that again. Although we're gonna find this not found error message quite a bit. All right, uh, I'm going to show you something that's helpful. The view function. So let's view our wage pan data set. Yeah, this is a way you can sort of go through your data and look and see stuff. You can see all your different variables. You can see all the rows, all the columns. Uh, sometimes that's helpful because you can see how things are structured or see if there's anything missing. There's the view command for you if you want it. Oops, I forgot to annotate my code, man. Well, that's going to be a pretty lame annotation. I'm going to say view chosen data. All right, that one is pretty obvious. Uh, by the way, what did I do here with these parentheses? I've done this a couple of times. These parentheses mean we're using a function. The library parentheses is a function in R. Data parentheses is a function. View is a function. You plug an input in and then a specific result comes out. Another function that might be useful to you is the summary function. So for instance, I could do summary of wage pan and what's it gonna give me? It's going to give me for each variable in this code summary statistic. Let me blow this up so we can see it a little better. Yeah, reunion, minimum zero, maximum zero, 24% of them are in a union, etc. Now this gave me lots and lots of different results. So what if I only wanted to see my summary stats for just one of them? Let's say I want to see my summary stats for, let's do union, for instance, wherever it was. Does that work? Uh, why didn't that work? Object of closure is not subsettable. Uh, let's try it again. What if I tell it where to find the union? Look at that. Now that I did that, I had to specify that it was in the wage pan set. And this dollar sign is just to connect union. So it's saying summary of something in wage pan and that specific thing is union. This is, it creates a path to my specific variable. Now I could have done this to any other variable in there. There's a log of wage variable instead. And it does that. So this is a very common mistake. That first time I did it where I did just union or if I did just log of wage, it doesn't work. My students very often hate seeing this object not found code. And all that usually means is you need to specify your data set. Dollar sign and then your variable. And then we're good to go. Here we were learning to use summary command. All right, uh, let's do just a couple more things. 
what if I wanted to, instead of doing a full summary on everything, what if I just want the mean? Let's try to get mean of L wage and education, which are both variables in this data set. Can I just say, let's see, let's do them separately just for fun. Education. Does that work? No. Did you catch the mistake? I need to have this wage pan command in it. Not command, but path in it. All right. So there's the mean of education. People are a little bit under 12 years in this data set. And I can also do mean of wage pan. All right. Let's see. Wage pan. Dollar sign L wage. And so let's see, can I run more than one line at a time? Of course. It'll just give me each result separately. So I can calculate the means, and if you compare them to the summary, it'll still work. Like you'll see that the mean is the same. So yeah, we'll learn more about uh, more to do with this stuff later. Right now, I'm just trying to make it so that you can access your data. So that's pretty much it for part one. This video is already pretty long, longer than I meant to. Uh, I was just trying to get you to be able to open and use data and be looking for my other R videos. If you're interested, I'm going to cover lots of other stuff from plots to calculations, to creating functions, to loops, to regression tricks, to all kinds of other stuff. Hope it was useful. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck econ in.